ask and see if anyone can answer it. My question is, has anybody up here seen Waiting for Superman and what did you think of it? I've only seen the trailer, so I can't comment completely, but I recommend highly for everyone to go to. It's a, it is definitely a discussion about our public school systems in general, the directors from Venice, so I strongly recommend it, but I don't think I can really comment by just looking at the trailer. I want this question for Chris Bly. Chris, as, as a board member, what do you think the role is of an individual board member, and then, and then what do you think the the role of the board is? It's a good question. I'm appreciative of Mr. Snell asking me that. I think a board member is oversight to make sure that the district is focused on what it's supposed to be on, which is the classroom. And when you lay off 43 teachers and 16 other classified staff that relate to the classroom, it's pretty clear that oversight's not being done, and it's being done by the district itself. I see the role of the board as someone who's there to protect the child, the classroom, and the teachers who are in there. Because unlike companies that have, that have diversified centers, there is only one center to the schools, and that's the classroom, the teachers, and the kids. And the kids aren't being served when we're not looking at a whole budget. We're only looking at one part that the district serves up. So that's my answer. A board needs to be there for oversight and to ensure that the focus of the district remains the kids, the classroom, programs, and the teachers. Thank you. Okay, this question's for Oscar. Oscar, you're, a, you're brilliant. You're articulate, you're smart, you understand a lot of the issues of our city. It seems like your platform is bigger than the school board and that you can do a lot more. You've been on the board for eight years now. Don't you think it's time for the board to have new leadership, new chain, and those that will focus on education platform and nothing else? Uh, Nimbus, thank you very much. I also think that you're a highly educated individual and uh, so I appreciate the accolades. Um, but one thing that I want to say is this, is that, you know, these are challenging times, unprecedented times in public education. When I joined the school board in 2002, we faced a $13 million budget deficit. We worked collaboratively. As a community, we said public education is a priority. We passed local funding measures. I think this community and the students of this district, they need experienced leadership on the board at this time. Everyone is saying the same thing. These are challenging times. These are hard times fiscal crisis, you know, the community needs to decide. Do you want someone that has been in Santa Monica living for 11 years or someone who's a lifelong resident? Do you want someone in this community who has proven leadership, who has, when, when the budget cuts came and, and they asked to cut the music program, I said no. When special education parents said we have a problem, I took the lead and we brought solutions. That's the type of leadership that I'm providing, and I can't abandon the school district right now in the worst fiscal crisis that we fit, that we face, that we have faced, and I, and, and I'll do my best on the school board. Good friend Patrick. Um, I guess I mean for my education as well. If you could just take take a minute and talk about your sense of a community in the district or not community. You have been a teacher for, for 30 years, you lived in Malibu, and maybe just you know, really briefly, if you feel we are uh, fighting a good battle and headed in the right direction. Okay, some of you may not know, I've been a 35-year resident of Malibu, uh, so my feet have been firmly stuck in Malibu, and I commuted every day on the PCH here into Santa Monica. Uh, I think about 10 years ago, we began to lose connection. Uh, I think that, that we became isolated, not only between Malibu and Santa Monica, but within Santa Monica, within schools. Uh, we used to have, and I think it, it can be board policy, articulation meetings where we would talk about uh, third grade history, fifth grade history, eighth grade history, eleventh grade history. All of us knew what we were teaching, where we were going to go. We had subject matter meetings. People would come in from Malibu. They would know what we were doing in town. We could make the kinds of local choices that would work best for our school, but we could still collaborate with other schools. The same thing needs to be true of PTSAs. I mean, people are worried about raising money. They want it just for their school, and I understand that. But we, we have not just a district-wide problem, we have a nationwide problem. And that's the piece I'd like to work on. Thank you. Hey, Jake. Jake, I love this guy. I do. Jake, tell me what you would like to see in a teacher uh, teacher evaluations. How would you go about doing that? Thank you, because that was a very dangerous question to take a yes or no on, and it's always tough to go first on those questions. Um, 
I, th I think that teachers are trying to actually work to make sure that they improve, and all teachers want to be better. I don't think there's any teacher who doesn't want to be better, and so I want to have cross-collaboration to actually help those teachers, and we've talked about the cross-class collaboration. Please talk to me afterwards, I don't have much time to talk about it. And then the, the other thing is the ability to have professional development to actually enrich the, te the teachers and, and their abilities to teach. I think we need to do those things first before we actually have evaluation measures that are going to be certainly not, at this point, I think, premature to be public. So when you're acting, when the question was yes or no, in the long term, I think yeah. yes, but it, but I think that we have a far way, we have a long way to go to get to there. I think we have to really help teachers out. We have to help them be able to improve and to help improve each other. And this is happening at, at very specific schools around the district. So please realize that our teachers are working very hard and diligently to get better. Thanks. Thank you very much. Pat. Thank you. Okay. Well, numbers pick me. I'll pick numbers. How's that? We'll be we'll be fair. Um, I was elected on, uh, to the school board in 2002, and I learned the first thing on the board when everyone was talking about equity and equality and, and all that, you know, good discussions for us to have, but I learned that uh, Olympic High School, which serves uh, students who are the poorest in the district, and students who, uh, what's the question? Okay, the question is this, for, just really quick, for 40 plus years, Olympic High was not accredited, and that changed when I was elected on the school board. My question to Nimish is, why do you think for 40 plus years, Olympic High School was not accredited. Sure, and um, and I, I do want to congratulate you and always standing out for those that, that, that can speak and be the voice for those people. But the, you know, the bigger question is though, that's, that's then, this is new challenges now, and we need Olympic High, but Santa Monica High and Malibu High. We've got kids that are graduating that are not up to task because they don't have the classes that they needed, they don't have the teachers to guide them, they have class ratio sizes that are outside of normal teaching standards. I would like to see board members who are not going to react, but be proactive. I'd like to see decisions that are made not for tomorrow, but what's gonna happen five years from now. It takes leadership skills. Because you guys, this, this climate recession will pass. And when it does, we need to come out stronger, better, more effective, so our kids have the best education, so it gives them a fighting chance to become global citizens in our Well, it seems candidates are going back and forth between each other. So Pat, this is for you. Uh, you offer 35 years of knowledge that nobody up here can really speak to. And I, and I appreciate that, and I think regardless of what happens, everybody should look to that and realize that. Uh, you've met me a short time, but you've heard my ideas. I really would like to know whether or not you would support me as a candidate for school board, and I'm kind of reaching here, but I'm, I really want to know. I want to know. I, res I respect your opinion. Pat? Yeah, Jake, I can support you. Uh, I, I don't think there's a problem there. Uh, I, I, I love his experience overseas. I think he brings a whole perspective that I don't have. I'm sort of from the inside. Now, wait a minute. I'm also a parent. In fact, the first time I met Jake, I, I said, Jake, you have daughters. And I had a daughter. My daughter started in Malibu. She came to Will Rogers, went to JAMS, graduated Samuel 98, uh, went to SMC, and finally graduated from Oregon State University in 2002. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I've been a parent. So I've seen the process from the inside and from the outside. Not only that, I'm a coach and a teacher and I also understand a lot of things about what expectations can be in having those things and how to get there. And I think that, that, that one of the things I like about you is that you have those high expectations. You ask for change, it's not for change sake. You want change for the better. And that's a piece that I like. Thank you. My question is for Mr. Metro. At our last debate, um, I'm curious, the California Department of uh, Education puts out a website that allows comparison analysis between comparable districts, and you stated that my numbers that include 2.05 million for our personnel department, 524,000 for our personnel commission that do the same thing, by the way, um, the 812,000 that we spent on classified data processing versus the 86,000 Las Virgenes spent and the 633,000 they spent in personnel and the zero dollars they spent on the personnel commission weren't valid because of accounting procedures. 
If that's the case, how come we have a California Department of Education website that's up there for comparable reasons? Are they just putting the numbers up there to put them up there? What's the reason for that? Yeah, that's right. Look, I appreciate the work, the effort we've done, and, you've, and I've gone, I, I use the data website a lot. I didn't say that it wasn't valid data, that data is there. What, what I did say, and I have a hard time saying how another district, like Las Virginis, would have an $80,000 IT budget. That would be one person to run an entire district. I know we have what, four or five or six people in our central office in data processing. We also have um, I, IT folks who, who share sites. They go to, you know, to one or two sites. Sam Waha has, has their own, Malibu has their own. So we, you know, I have to assume, and nobody's asking, ha, you haven't asked them that question at Las Virginis, how do they service all their computers? There's new computers, there's new software, everything has to be taken care of. They have a hard time just doing what they do. The, the same is in terms of the, the, the um, I'm sorry, the other numbers for personnel. The personnel commission actually is independent. We, the board, does not control the personnel commission and its budget. So that money is spent, you know, through uh, different uh, legal means. Um, all districts have have personnel procedures. Ours right. has been set for about 40 years. Thank you. No, I believe our current. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Absolutely not this time of economy, okay? No. Undecided. Yes. Undecided? I wrote it in the, in the Santa Monica Daily Press, so please read there. Thank you. You understand? <laughs> yes, I do think so. No. Thank you. Accountability and transparency are my middle name. That's something that I've worked really hard to do. I mean, you won't get another school board member that's going to go out the way I have in terms of holding staff accountable. I think people in this room know, people that work close with me on the board know that I'll take a stand when, it, when it's time to take a stand and I'll have the courage to stand up and to do what's right, to be loyal to the parents and to the students of the school district. That's where my loyalty is, not to any political party and frankly not to the staff, but always to the parents and to the students of the school district. Thank you. I, I think the job of a school board member is to hold the whole system accountable. Uh, I've been a teacher and a parent. I think that I can separate those roles. Um, I'm not much of a politician. Uh, I think of myself as an educator, and, and if you want to talk to me about education issues, I'm, I'm pretty good on that. But no, I'm not beholden, and I don't think there is that kind of a culture. I do advocate consensus, and I do advocate um, being publicly uh, in accord. The idea is to, which we all share, we all share this entire community, is to educate our students, to always look for what's best to do. We have a successful district, we, but we should always be looking for innovative ideas to make us a better district. We need to bring technology in, we need to talk to teachers, we need to you know, work together to make it better. Consensus is the right thing if we get there. Our DNA is over 90% the same, our ideas are generally the same, so yes, the more we work together, the, the quicker we're going to get to where we want to go. Thank you. This is the first time doing anything like this. And I can actually say that I'm not endorsed by SMER or the union leaders. I'm independent. My only special interest that I'm going to be focusing on is our children. Their needs, their education will come first. I've got a daughter who never lets me get away with anything. I want that to be the case, that I'm responsible for the kids and only them, and those are the, my constituents. As a board member or elected official, I represent the community of Santa Monica and Malibu. That's my first representation in the students of our district. As a member of the board, issues that are work before the board, publicly, I can speak my opinion on those opinions. Closed door sessions, the opinions are of the board. And when things come out, even if I disagree with it, I'm a board member and boards go with me. The, the general consensus of the board. So I've learned real quickly that we have rules, Brown Act rules, that we have to abide by as a board. Sometimes things that you see are very easily done. Thanks, Barry. Sorry. Okay. Strict on the time now. Um, no, I certainly don't think this 